Hi guys, happy new year. Um, obviously this is not the ideal way I'd like to be um, teaching maths in 2021, but sure, it is what it is, and I'm sure we'll be back as quickly as they can get us back. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna we'll, we'll continue on, and we will finish off with the higher level function stuff, and then move on to something else come next week. Um, the plan is to, is to stick with three three classes a week and three pieces of work a week. Um, we we'll go with our one note. Our one note has served as well so far, um, and we'll be going on to that in a few minutes. And then a sec, um, when we uh, uh, finish this little bit, um, and. Um, we go to higher level functions, move on to something else then, and then by the end of the month I'd like to have two more chapters done. So we go three classes a week, um, and within that three classes a week then, we'll um, um, do Monday, Wednesday, and, fr and Friday, maybe a live one on Friday, but you will see how it suits. With this now, the, you're seeing this now as a YouTube link, and the YouTube link will, we, will be in Schoology and also um, in, in the OneNote, but the YouTube link will take you through the OneNote. But everything you see in the video on, on OneNote obviously syncs to your iPad as well. So you'll have access to the questions and later on I'll put up the solutions um, as we go through it. Um, your tests um, are really good, really, really good. Delighted with the results and um, very, very promising. Promising. There's no one in there that seems, in my opinion, out of their depth. Um, obviously I can't give the scripts back, so there's no point in trying to correct it at this point. But um, they're very, very good. The reports are done up, so the, the grade and the comment is in the reports. If you're, I suppose, if you can't wait, you can just shoot me an email, and um, I will um, email you back your results. I'm not going to start calling them out here in a video, um, but very, very good. Very, very happy um, with the standard in the class, and um, yeah. So um, obviously, this is how we're going to be doing it for a while. We'll do, we'll do, we'll, we'll do our best. We'll get through as much as we can, um, but. You know, the OneNote really does allow us to um, explain stuff and try questions and correct questions like we would do like we would do in class. The only thing you're missing is the interaction. So if we feel after a while that the interaction would, would um, um, is, is needed, then we might just switch to live and pick a, pick a couple of times a week to do all the lessons live, which is very fairly fairly doable as well. All right, all right. So what we're doing is we're going back to uh, to to functions. So when you go into your when you go into your one if you're looking for this document, here's our second year higher level maths. Um, my name, and when you go into the thing we were using before, um, so that, that's our exam prep folder we were at before we finished off within the into the functions tab there, and your book one, which we finished at the end of the term. So that instead of going into the book one, we went to the book two one. Um, and up the top of this, I have labeled it book two. Graphing functions week one of the school closure. So we're hoping to get this done now this week all, all in one go uh, Over here just if you're not in this group there's two people missed. I'm not sure who they are But this is the name of the group in Schoology and the access code is there So if you want to join in there um, I'll be asking for some maybe some work to be put up there um, and I'll post the YouTube um, Links there. So um, you should be in that group um, as well. Okay Right, so we might as well get back to it anyway Um. This here, up the top here, this is all your um, keywords and stuff that we had. And this is exactly the same that was in um, that was in book one. So you have all these words here, like uh, what's an input, what's a domain, an output, a codomain, an array. So you remember at the start, we were doing the mapping diagrams, and then we were doing the function tables. And then we progressed and we started subbing numbers into those functions. And if I had an x squared and an x and a number, we were saying it was a quadratic function. If it didn't, it was a linear function. So you kind of knew before you start whether you were going to be drawing a curve or going to be drawing a line. And from your exams, really, most of you mastered this and it was your best question with 35 out of 35 nearly across the board. But this is the higher level stuff. So it just jumps up a level. The, the, the functions, they throw a few fractions into them or a few decimals into them. And at the end then, if you have a look at this first example here, after you've done the graphing bit, they tend to say, oh, will you do a bit of work and find me a few numbers on the graph? So, um, that, that's the only difference between the ordinary level and the higher level, really, when you go to um, when, when you're looking at functions. So this question is using the same scales and axes, graph the function g and the function h, defined by these two here. So um, here you have one function, which is this one, looks kind of like quadratic, doesn't it? Because it has a minus x squared. You may even be able to tell before we even look at this: is it going to be a u shape or an n shape? Because that little negative sign in front of the x squared. And then we have this other one, this h of x, which is 2 thirds x plus 1. Because that hasn't got an x squared, we're fairly sure it's not going to be a curve. It's going to be some sort of line, maybe a linear function. 
And the final thing, piece of information that we're interested in is this yoke here. Is because we know then that it's going to go between zero and six. So we're going to be summing in zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. So when you look down through the example then, they've, they've graphed g of x over here. So g of x is this one here. G of x. And exactly the same. They've used it the, the, in red there, highlight minus x squared plus 6x is, um, is across the top here. So here's your function. And we said there it was, it, it was, it was 0 to 6. So down the left-hand side, they've subbed in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And they've worked out, and the interesting thing, and the bit you're going to, the bit you're going to be interested in, is, are your couples. So your couples are all down here on the left. And they did exactly the same for, um, for h of x. So 0 to 6, they subbed in um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so we have a look at those. Um, actually, they haven't. On, in, in the linear function, three points will be sufficient to graph it. Because, because it's a straight line, I was, I was looking at it there and saying, well, why haven't they done 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6? And they haven't because well, it's a straight line. So if you know um, 0, 3, and 6, it's, going to be, it, 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 it's enough to draw a line. So there's no point subbing in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so we take this, the, the first one over here. So we first start off with g of x. And we graph it. And when you when you sub in your when you sub in your, your couples there, you get this nice graph here. And here's your, your your g of x graph there. And it is, as we expected, because it has an x squared, it's a quadratic function. And there's your graph. So these here, the, these points here give you that nice curve. Okay, and then we go and we graph the graph the line. They're right, three points did do. So three points, you had 0, 1, you had 3, 3. And you had six five. So you had three points there, and that gives you a nice straight line going down through the quadratic function. Okay, and you've done loads of those, and you all managed to do that in the in, in the exam. So that's not where the higher level bit comes in. The higher level bit comes in. We go back up here. Where is g of x equal to five point five? So g of x is equal to where is g of x equal to 5.5? And we go back down to the graph here and we look, right, where is 5.5? Well, over here, we go to where y is equal to 5.5, and we go across, and when we go across, across the whole thing like this, we say, okay, it touches the curve there, and it touches the curve here. And when we bring that line down, it gives us one point say one point something, and it gives you somewhere like four point, maybe 4.8, 4.9, something like that. So that's going to be your axis. And again, the answer there they give is 1.1, which is about right, just over the one, and 4.9, that's your answer. So that's how you work it. If they want you to work out, so g of x is equal to 5.5, your answer is going to be you go across from y, where it touches the curve, and go down. Whereas h of x equal to 3.5, so, Part B, and we go down and look and we, where, where, where is h of x is, is, is equal to, is equal to 3.5? So we go to where y is 3.5, which is somewhere here, and we go across to the line. So where does it touch the straight line that we've drawn? So when we draw our line across, it touches it just there. And again, we go down, and it's somewhere here, like 3.8, something like that. Yeah, so it is, in, in the answer there, you can see where x is 3.8. Um, the last, the part C then, part C asks for where is g of x equal to h of x? And we had this in the, in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the last chapter, where g of x equal to h of x. That's where g of x touches h of x. And you can see there, there's a couple of points that g of x touches h of x. Right down here in the bottom left, and it touches it here. So you're just listing those points. But the question, keep on the question, estimate the values of x. So you're looking for the values of x where those two touch. And there is 0 0.2. So down, if, you, if you look, um, it's going to be 0 0.2 and 5.1. So that's our, our, our two points. So it's going to be somewhere there. And it's going to be somewhere here. So I'm sorry. Now, the last bit then 
is where two thirds x minus one is equal to zero. So find the value of x when two thirds x minus one is equal to zero. So you're looking just to find the value of x there. And you can see what they've done in the, in the solution. You're gonna have two thirds x minus one is equal to zero, or to get rid of the, to rid of the two thirds, you can just add two to, to both sides to get the h of x on the left hand side. And they worked that out then. So you do your algebra, and they worked it out the h of x is equal to h of x is equal to two. So you do your bit of algebra and work at h of x is equal to two. So what you do is then you draw a line where y is equal to two and see where it cut, cuts h x, and that'll give you your x value. So we're looking for this line. So we go up to where y is equal to two, so here. And we draw a line across to see where it touches the line, which is here. And that brings us down to this point here. So one point something. And the answer there is one point five. And the answer there they give us what, 1.5. All right. And bear in mind that with these videos, you can pause them and go back on them. Or you can look up another worked example in the book. Um, you can just go back to book one and try some of the revision questions because um, they're, they're only, they're, 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 Pretty, pretty much the same, but the more you do, the better you get at doing them. But uh, at this point, I'm not worried about the graphing. We're more worried about um, the, the, the questions. G of X is equal to 5.5, H of X equal to 3.5, and so on. Okay, a couple of bits you, um, that you, you see. So when you're drawing these graphs, and you're looking to find where H of X is equal to 3, or the minimum point to the maximum point, if you haven't got the graph drawn properly, um, you, you, you can lose marks and end up writing down an incorrect value for a maximum or a min or a, where h of x is equal to g of x because they're going to, if the, if the graph's not drawn properly, they're going to be different values on your graph. So if you have a look at this one on the left here. So if you don't plot the curve, if you don't plot a full curve, so you can see there on this that this curve should be continued up. Whoops. This curve should be continued up to to the end because it might be a case that you have to draw a line through and you're looking for points where they intersect on that line and if you haven't completed the curve then you can't find that point of intersection and you're only going to get one answer you're going to miss this one over here so make, make sure you plot all the points i know in that example we only plotted three but it was because it was a straight line you only need to plot, plot three so once you plot the first one the last one it doesn't matter this one here the middle one Drawing straight line segments between adjacent points rather than a smooth curve. So they call it a U-shaped curve or an N-shaped curve or a quadratic curve because it should be a curve. It shouldn't be, you see these lines are drawn really straight in the middle here. Whereas in fact, the, the, the graph should be drawn a nice smooth curve. Okay. And the right one then, points are incorrect, they don't form a parabolic curve. And we, I, I always, when we were doing this, I am telling you, that if you start drawing the curve, and there's a random point here. See this point here? When you see that, alarm bell should ring. Obviously, that curve should continue from here and go down this way. But if you see a random point, you've made a mistake somewhere up in this table. So when you, if, if I started drawing this curve here, and it, um, I, I was getting a point over here, I know that I've done something wrong, so I have to go back to my table. And have I made a sign error here somewhere? Or have I, made, have I done a minus by a minus equals a minus? Things like that. And, it, and, and it'll bring you back to figure out where you went wrong inside the graph. Right. One from your book that, um, that I, th I thought we'd just give a quick go to um, before, we, um, before we, I, I leave you alone to try your own ones. So, by completing a copy of the following input-output table, Graph the function f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x minus 4. So here's our function, nice quadratic function. And they want us to go from minus 4 up as far as 1. So we're going to have to sub into the, into the quadratic. Minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1. And then that's going to give us our y-coordinates over here. And then for our graph, um, it's going to give us our couples. So we can draw, so, so we can draw our graph. Okay, very nicely, they do the first one for us. So I'm gonna draw this one out quickly. Um, 
and um, if everyone's okay, then we can we, we, we can um, go on and try a few. So this is obviously instead of minus instead of it, where where x was instead of minus four in the first one, we're going to put minus three squared minus two squared minus one squared zero squared and one squared plus three plus three plus three plus three. Plus three. Plus three. And then I'm going to sub in, instead of minus four, I'm going to sub in the new numbers, minus two, minus one, zero, and one. Put stick new brackets around that, so I know to multiply. And then I sub in new minus four, as is in the quadratic. And the y values then work out as, this is minus four, this is minus six. So you do your multiplication out there, bang straight into your calculator. Minus four, minus six, minus six minus four zero and not to sound cocky or anything but i think this looks good because um, it, it seems quite symmetrical there i have a zero top and bottom of two six in the middle and two minus fours both sides of those so i think i might be on for a winner but we'll see when we start drawing it our couples then minus three minus four minus two minus six minus one minus six zero minus four and one and zero okay so then i'm wondering well my, my x-axis is going to have to be my x-axis i'm going to have to go from one to minus four so i'm going to start up out here i'm going to go in like so and my y-axis, I have to I have to go down as far as minus six and only up as far as zero. So really most of this graph is going to be, most of this graph is going to be down below the, um, down below the y-axis. Okay, so. Okay, so and minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, and minus six. And I have no positive y naught. I'll put the y axis in as well just to make it look a bit more like a graph. But we have no positive y numbers at all. Okay, so. On the x-axis, I'm going minus four, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. Three, minus two, minus one, and then I think I just have positive one in the um, in the positive. I'm going to stick in my x and I'm going to stick in my y. Okay, so. I start to draw my graph then. My first point is minus four, zero. So on the x-axis, I go back as far as minus four and I leave the point there on zero. My second point is minus three, minus four. So I go back as far as minus three and down as far as minus four. My third point is going to be minus two, minus six. So I um, go back as far as minus two and go right down as far as minus six, looking good on the curve. My fourth point, minus one, minus, minus one, minus six. So I'm staying minus one. I'm going to stay at the minus six. So sorry, I have to draw the six there. Um, my, my next point is zero, minus four. So a zero on the x-axis and minus four on the y-axis. Still looking good for a curve. And my last point is one, zero. So my point is going to be one and zero like that. Okay. So I'm going to... Draw my curve, do it in red here. And my curve should be, so I'll start up here, and go right down, nice curve. I'm not using the ruler, I'm just going and drawing a curve and keep going. And there's a nice symmetrical curve like that. Okay, so I've gone over the two points on both sides, so why should why not? Okay, and there's my curve. I know you, you, you know me in drawing, but um, you know that's as good as it gets for me. But you can uh, you can you can use the ink to shape and shapes and things like that to make yours um, much neater. Um, or if you're doing it on a page, you can use graph paper with smaller blocks. So, moving on then, what is the minimum value 
of f of x. So we're down here now. What is the minimum value of f of x? The minimum value of y. Remember, f of x is equal to y. I'm going to be careful here because I'm going to go down and say, right, well, if, remember, because I've kind of gone beyond, I've kind of gone below the, below the minus 6 here by going below the curve. Because I, but they're both at minus 6. So I've kind of gone, see, I've gone below. I would say that if I get, if I get a different colour pen, for purple, and I draw it across from the bottom of that, it's slightly below 6. So I would say somewhere about maybe 6.1, 6.2. That's the minimum value of 6. They won't accept 6 for that because they know that the curve has to go below the 6 to get, um, to, to get around to the next point. So our answer there for part A is going to be something like 6.1. And in an exam, it'll be somewhere like, take anything between 6.05 and 6.2. So around 6.1, but they want you to go below 6 because the, point, the curve will have to go below the 6. The next one, part B, says, um, from, from your graph, find the values of where f of x is equal to minus 6. So where y is equal to, to minus 6. So where f of x is equal to f x equal to minus six. So we say well, well um, to call it a different color pen again. Let's go green this time. So well, here's where f of x is. Here's where x is where, where y is equal to minus six. So your points are going to be this point here and this point here. And if we look at where they are on the x axis, where they are on the x axis, it's going to be. Well, if I go all the way up. There's our answer, and here's our other one. Answer. So our answer for this one is going to be where x is equal to minus 1 and x is equal to minus 2. There's our two answers. Okay. And the last part, they want you to remember your first year algebra. So they say verify your answer to part B algebraically. So use algebra basically to verify your answer to, to, to part B. Okay. So basically, if we go back to our equation, they're saying that, well, here's our function. Our function was x squared plus 3x minus 4. Here's our function. And they're saying, well, um, where f of x is equal to minus 6. So where that function is equal to minus 6. So what we do is we let that function equals minus 6. And if we, if we, if we so we factorize, if we say, right, let's try and factorize this fella here. The factors for that, remember how you do that, remember how you factorize a quadratic equation. The factors work out as, um, no, before we factorize, hang on, before we factorize, you have to bring the 6 over. So what you're going to end up with, x squared plus 3x minus 4 plus 6 is equal to 0. So all I've done there is I've brought the, I've brought the minus 6 over and changed the sign. So your new function is going to be x squared plus 3x minus 4 plus 6 plus 2 is equal to 0. Now, that looks a bit better. And when you factor, is equal to, I'm not equal to 6, equal to 0. And when you factorize that, you get x plus 1 is one factor, and x plus 2 is another factor, and let that equal to 0. So if you have those two as factors, you then say, well, okay, what's the x values? Well, x is going to be equal to minus 1, or x is going to be equal to minus 2. And there's your two answers for um, part C. So if they ask you to find something algebraically, well, they said up here, they said up there, that f of x is equal to minus 6. So we said, right, well, okay, fine. Um, well, here's, here's f of x. We let it equal to minus 6. x squared plus 3x minus 4 plus 6 is equal to 0. So we brought the 6 over. And we, and, we, and we worked out the minus 4 plus 6 is equal to plus 2. We got the factors of that, which gave us this and this. And we're saying, well, did that work? Well, yeah, it did. Because if we go back up here, we said x is equal to minus 1 and x is equal to minus 2. Well, okay, that ties up with what we worked out here. So we can either work it out from the graph or we can work it out algebraically. Okay, hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, sure you can get you, you can you can give me a shout and let me know um, what bit you're what bit you're having ha, ha, have an issue with. So what I'd like you to do, um, 
for Wednesday. So our next class, our next um, video will be uh, on Wednesday. And then we'll start that off by correcting some of these before we move on to stuff further down the line. Okay. Um, um, and what, we, what, what I want you to do for Wednesday here is your, so your homework for Wednesday. So this is in book two, chapter 14, questions three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and 13. So six questions. That's due by Wednesday. So due by Wednesday's class. And what I want you to do, that if you go out here, um, instead of in the functions, and I go into any of your accounts, I have all your accounts here. If you, and if, if you do, so if you do your homework on a copy, you just take a picture and you post it into the homework section in your OneNote. If you, have a, if you have an Apple Pencil or a stylus of some description, you can write the questions directly into OneNote. It is up to you, whichever way, but it should be up there in your OneNote. Um, so there's the, the six questions to do. You don't have to go into the book if you don't want to. I have copied the questions in here and I've highlighted them in, 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 in yellow there, which ones you should be which ones you should be doing. And what we'll do is we'll, take, we'll correct a sample of those um, before we start on, on new material on Wednesday. All right, guys, thanks very much. Um, don't be stressing yourselves out over this now. You know, do your best um, between now and Wednesday after you've watched this video. Give it another, you know, give it half hour, 40 minutes. I know you have other subjects um, to, be, to, to, to be doing as well. So do, do, do your best. Um, tap away. It just, I'd be worried if we don't, you know, make a bit of progress over the month that we're, you know, we're losing an, losing an, an extra month and we're kind of falling that bit further behind. And as I told you before, I like to, you know, box off the course by mock time to give us loads and loads of revision before we tackle this junior cert but your your exams give me real um, confidence that you're all well able um, and good hard workers so um, we will get there and we'll be ready so um, have a great week everyone I will um, talk to you again on Wednesday try and get those questions done for me and upload it into the homework section I'll, I'll have a, a look through a few of them so I can spot a few common errors before I come back to you on Wednesday. All right, bye-bye.